Planet Fan, Chapter 1, Arrival Devlin awoke to the sound of pouring rain and the stench of blood and mud mixing together, his head pounding with a powerful migraine. He groaned lowly, his movement slow as a slog as he pushed himself up from the puddle of rainwater. He felt his arms tense and tremble with weakness, his voluminous long black hair dripping with rain. With a grunt and a final push, he sat on his knees, swaying a little as he attempted to orient himself. The air was thick with musky odors, the coppery smell of blood overpowering the rotten apple scent of rain as Devlin hissed in stinging pain. He looked down and noticed that there was a long gash in his side. The flesh ripped like a chasm as blood rolled down in thick, viscous lines. His pupil shrunk to pinpricks, his mind sounded bursting with panic and instinct. He pressed a hand up against the open wound, even as the blood started to soak his fingerless gloves. However, he felt the muscle tissue under his flesh still hold him together, relief washing over as he continued to apply pressure. It wasn't as deep as he thought. But then... quickly realized it wasn't his vision. The moon was red and bright. The mud looked like pools of blood, the grass thick like the fur of a wild red wolf, everything darker than it should have been. But Devlin's eyes allowed him to see into the void of blackness. He was surrounded by dense forest, sitting in a patch of mud in the middle of nowhere. There was nothing but bushes, vines, and more thick grass, the pelting rain hitting the ground with rapid splashes as the mud spread further. Devlin refocused his attention to his wound, a distinct feeling of nausea slowly creeping up as he carefully started to remove his black leather jacket. He regretted not wearing a shirt, knowing that some expendable cloth would have been useful. But of course, how is he supposed to know that a quick nap on the couch and the safety of his home would lead him to this dreadful place. Putting aside his grievances for the sake of avoiding bleeding out, he grabbed his messy hair with one hand, quickly pulling it all back. He watched on in horror, his own blood continuing to rush down and stain his dark gray jeans. He pressed a little harder, groaning in pain. He was suddenly interrupted by a blue holographic screen that appeared right in front of him displaying a message clear as day. He shivered, attempting to read the message addressed to him. But an automated feminine voice overpowered his own thoughts and the sound of the rain, catching him by surprise. Welcome to Planet Ferrum. Devlin, we apologize for your wound. Your arrival wasn't as smooth as we hoped. However, you have been chosen to contest in four trials following the next four weeks of your stay here. For your first day, we will provide you with any tools of your preference for the sake of survival. You will be encountering other intelligent life forms. To request any item, simply speak it aloud. We are certain you have questions, but please save them for the wandering trader who will visit you after your first trial completion. Devlin stared for a moment in confusion. But he knew he attacked fast or he would bleed out. Can I get some bandages? He asked, speaking as clearly as he could. His voice was deep, gruff, and a bit hoarse from dehydration. He was unsure if anyone could hear him over the rain, but he hoped someone did. Within seconds, however, an ancient looking black chest appeared below the holographic screen, blue pixelated particles all around it. It wasn't nearly as large as Devlin's incredible height, but it also wasn't tiny, being just the right size to carry a variety of medical tools. Devlin's long, pointy ears perked up, and he immediately reached out to the chest in desperation as he cut the hand over his wound. 
He opened up the chest with a flick of the old barrel bolt lock, lifting the top and seeing multiple rolls of gauze and other supplies. There was even medical tape and a small kit for stitching up his wound. It seemed like whoever sent the box, however they did it, knew how bad it was. He muttered a thanks towards the holographic screen, noticing that a translucent blue force field had been summoned above him, sheltering him from the rain. Its low electric hum was somehow comforting, protecting Devlin as he picked up a small towel from the chest. He first attempted to stop the bleeding and clean up the area as best as he could, pressing down once he was certain the towel covered the whole gash. He noted how long it was, and how it felt like something like a jagged knife had torn his skin. He managed to stay quiet, even as his head continued to pound with an almost unbearable agony, combined with the intense stinging and throbbing. Getting a decent look at the open wound, he grabbed the stitching kit, as it was still deep and wide enough to need stitches. He had experience doing this with other people back home, since it was part of his old job as a field medic, but he never had to stitch himself up. So he went into it with what knowledge he had, expecting the piercing pain of the curved needle as it punctured his skin. His long, skinny demon tail flicked aggressively, much like a cat's. His breath was hot and heavy, despite his attempts to control his breathing. So he bit down on one corner of the towel, his powerful, sharp teeth piercing right through the soft cloth. But he kept on anyway, determined to get the job done, even if he was growling in pain. After some long, agonizing minutes, Devlin finally managed to stitch the whole wound closed, putting the towel back over it as he grabbed a roll of gauze from the chest in front of him. He made a quick job of wrapping himself up, covering his waist with the gauze and then using the tape to keep it secure. He sighed deeply in relief, trembling like a leaf and slowly catching his breath. Then the message on the holographic screen suddenly changed. That same automated feminine voice speaking the words. Your first trial begins tomorrow. Find a place to rest, you'll need it. As for your requested supplies, you may keep them. Good luck. Devlin nodded in understanding, closing the chest and bringing it close to himself. He slipped his jacket over his shoulders, then grabbed the handle on the chest slid, slamming it shut and locking it. He used the closest tree as support to help him stand up. The force field, along with the holographic screen, disappeared. And so, Devon looked around, eyes scanning up and down through the forest tree. He saw a somewhat clear dirt path past some bushes, pushing through the thick foliage. He followed the path, his footsteps splashing with the rain. He pushed onwards through the pounding agony of his migraine, focused on moving forward and finding shelter. Devlin was about to collapse when he finally stumbled across a small cave carved into the side of a hill, rushing inside. He shook off some of the rainwater that soaked his whole body, glancing around and quickly spotting an empty bed of moss and fur up against the furthest wall of dirt and tree roots. He stumbled over and decided to lay in it, knowing it was the only spot he might be able to sleep even somewhat comfortably. He struggled, grunting with sharp breaths as he tried to be careful of his newly stitched wound. He eventually lay down, curling up in a ball on his side opposite of the stitches, shakily breathing and taking in the surprisingly pleasant earthy and almost flowery scent of the fur he had laid his head on. He closed his eyes, feeling weak and shaky as he trembled. Despite the pain, he found it easy to fall into a deep slumber, the sheer exhaustion knocking him out and sending him straight into unconsciousness. And so, that's where he spent the rest of the night, a dirt cave in a weird forest where the moon was red. He didn't have the time or energy to question where he was anymore, just going with the flow and whatever happened, even as he slept. 